Okay, um, for those of you who have got a fastback like this Norton Commando, um, this is a 71 one, same as I had uh, when I was younger. The seats are a problem. It looks a really rubbish affair, but these are original. This is how they did them. Um, it's just got two bends in that, just to um, clear the sides. It's got supports, which probably should have rubbers on for the frame. It's gone here. And it's got wings. Um, not very strong, really flimsy, so I've actually strengthened them along here. Um, and this bit, when I uh, put the seat on, there's a massive gap under here. It looked horrible. So I've stripped the cover off again and all the foam and made these bits up. Just fairly simple, they just fit that and bring the angle down to here, the mount. So this isn't the final one, this is just to get the distance. So the distance is there. So as long as these are right across there you should be pretty good as long as your back's fitting nice. But you see what I mean? It was a massive gap here, even if you brought the uh, seat cover down and the foam, it still looked horrible, there's gaps. So this is going on, I might trim it a bit. Uh, these will be chopped off. If you look at the, um, the centre line, these, these brackets were just put on uh, willy-nilly and it's not level, it goes off at an angle. Um, if you just get the centre line from the centre of your light, and up to the center of your steering head, just a bit of tape on there, level it up, and I'll give you some measurements for that, um, just in case you haven't got any. Let's have another look. And, uh, so, measurements. From the front to there, I'm going to do it in old money, so it's in inches. That's 21 inches from there to there, from that bar to here 21 inches. Right. Let's try the front of the flaps, a, uh, which is 29 inches. So that's 29 inches from here, which is the front of the flaps, to here. The flaps themselves to the seat pan are 8 inches. They're approximately, let's see, 3.5 inches tall. Um, let's measure the other bit now. So, this bit across here from there to there, which is the inside of the brackets, is 11 and a quarter inches. Okay, so I mean, you can judge it with your pan where your brackets need to be, but if you look at these previous attempts at brackets on here, uh, I think that may be the original one, but that comes up um, quite a way from, from where it should do. It's not here, it's in the centre of that will be there. Um, these are just put on for reinforcements for the seat uh, belt, the, you know, the strap that goes across the centre. Um, these, you know, just if you do fabricate it, just fabricate it yourself. But what's going to happen here now that the sides, this that this is the right size. These are going to be chopped off. So this one will be chopped off. I've got the measurement, and that might be trimmed around a little bit. I'm not sure yet, but I know where they are. So you know they're at the the, the right place. So what I'll do, I'll chop those off there, make up some brackets with the same bend because if you if you can see there is a angle to them. They come back in and there's a reason for that. That that angle leaves you a gap there, which you can pull the seat cover up in, into. If you left it like this, you'd have a hole in the seat cover there and a seam which wouldn't be very good and could tear. So 
they've got to be a separate item. Then it's no good attaching them like this, this you know preliminary one. So these are just going to be a bracket that goes there. You can bend it simply enough to get that right shape. Now, now you know what it is. Um, I think that's all I can tell you. Um, horrible welding, but <laughs> it, it does the job. <laughs> so there we go. That's the seat for the fastback. And uh, another perhaps interesting thing to you now that it's all sprayed up. Um, these stickers, I've got an original. I had an original one in '72, and that's where it was on mine. And this is the same colour as mine I had in '72. Um, it's only a year or so old. It also had, strangely enough, these bars on that looked like the P11s, but um, it had trail bars on, which was a thing at the time. So this one I'm restoring has gone back to that. Um, it's obviously got a Norton under there as well. And that's got a black line around the gold. Um, some people say that sticker should be here, and it probably could be. You know, some of them it was. Um, but mine. My original one was definitely there, and if you look in the magazines from '98, there's an original blue fastback there. That's where it is on that one, and that's not that's not been restored. That hadn't been restored at that time. Um, so at the moment, I'm just doing the tank. Uh, it's all sprayed up. Unfortunately, I sprayed it before I realised I needed some uh, sealer inside it. So it's this colour here, which is the metallic blue, which you can't see very well, but yeah, it was quite a tricky job to do. Um, there's some interesting information on there perhaps for somebody who's doing these colours. Let's have a look. So, there we go. Norton Commando 72, Earl's Royal Blue Flake 0.015. I got that from a, a really nice guy. Gave me the information about the flake, who had done one. Um, base coat blue BC PF540129. Now, some people say they had a silver under these, they might have done, but I'm pretty sure mine was like this originally. And it was a, a, a royal blue base, it's just a, a base coat of that colour. Um, this was mixed up in Leicester um, at, at a guy um, on the Barkby estate there. So, um, there was 50 to 60 grams of flakes per litre, up to 75 gram tops, what you can do. Um, I did five, uh, th th I mean, that's in a binder, so it's a binder carrier, and then I had four to five clear coats. So the binder carrier carried the metallic paint. Um, I think I ended up at more than they suggested. They suggest no more than 75 grams uh, per litre. Um, and I think I ended up at something like 40. No, it's more than that. I'm sure it's more than that. So, so 60. I had 60 grams in half, half a pint. So 60 grams in half a pint was the end result. Um, and I think it had... I'm sure I had seven coats of um, flake in that on there. So there were seven coats of flakes before. Let's have a look. Five. I put five to six here because it, it could have been six. I've got a feeling I did seven though. Um, well, you just have to see how it goes. What it looks like. I mean, if it looks nice, it looks nice. It's got to look nice. It's got to look like that. So then four to five clear coats. There's an important thing to remember here though. Is that you cannot. The, these flakes, although they're octagonal, I think, they sit up in whatever you put them on. So by the, if you put that amount of flake on, you're not going to be able to sand it or flat it after you've put the clear coat. Because the tips of them are silver. So when you sand through one of the flakes, you get a silver mark. I tried it. Um, it looks horrible. So I didn't want flip silver spots. So... You've got to make sure you spray your clear coat perfect. You know, you want perfect coats that you only need to polish, you don't need to rub down. Um, I should be struggling. The other thing 
is the sealer. Lots of people do two-part sealers, you know, epoxy type sealers. This one was the only one I could find that said it does fiberglass. So this is uh, Wagner's sealer. These came from um, a place, a real nice guy, he gave me some interesting information. And uh, it was here. Custom Cruisers in uh, Derbyshire, Alfreton. Uh, real nice guy, Mike. Uh, and Kaz sent some interesting information and they also split some tins because they didn't have a 250. If you're doing three, they, he suggested if you're doing uh, three coats over anything, uh, this was had got uh, an epoxy sealer in it already, a two two coat two pack one, um, and to go over that, um, he suggested three coats. So um, three coats, two fifty. You do it in two fifty. I'm just on my last last one now. This is the third one, but you know, go go by what they say. Each coat has got to drive twenty four to twelve to twenty four hours, depending on what the temperature is. You'll know if it's dry if it's gone off. Um, you just follow the instructions that you get with it and uh, well we'll see what happens but uh, I think it should be okay it looks like it's working all right it's a clear sealant uh, you do drain it back up after you've sloshed it round into the can so you do actually have more than you think you've got when you, when you tip the initial one in you can tip it back in seal it get some um, cling film around it and seal it with some masking tape so it's no air gets in it and then the next day um, and I started mine at one o'clock. So ne the next day at one o'clock, you know, you can ready to go again, uh, or a little bit before if you've dried it nicely indoors. So twelve to twenty-four hours, um, and then I think you sort of leave it for forty-eight hours. It's no longer possible to apply uh, another coat. So whether you're doing a third or fourth or whatever, um, forty-eight hours. F from your last coat don't do it after that because it won't uh, it won't adhere to it uh, and then it's seven to eight days uh, roughly before you can put fuel in it but that that's an interesting one that so uh, if anyone's doing sealant there we go uh, hopefully that's helpful um, nearly at the end of this now so this restoration should be up and running in the next few weeks I'm going to get the tank on um, I managed to get a reg because it was an American one that's just come through after a year of, or nearly a year of messing about with DVLA. Um, but there we go. That I hope, hopefully that's some use. The the uh, seat, seat covers are available. Um, luckily, I had a a seat um, pad with this, which was great because it is a shaped one. Um, and there's a cover that uh, I've pulled off, which I'd put on before I realised it looked horrible. Um, so there we go. Hopefully that's some use. Cheers.